Good day, Thunders and Thunderettes. It's going down, man. I got my boys, E-Ray, and uh, Kafir with me, man. We about to go into... We about to go into the Petco, get them some mealworms, and uh, chillax for the day, man. We in uh, quarantine. We in... Uh, social distancing and uh i decided me and my boys going to petco but um the main reason for this video is go check out code of vets man if you're a veteran man code of vets on twitter or uh facebook something like that but yeah i figure i'll make a video and get stuff going man but uh, today's topic is gonna be birdie dragon mitts. Birdie dragon mitts. Look at my boys, chilling, 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 chilling. Yeah, today's uh, video is about mitts, and uh, I have a few of them. The first myth we gonna talk about is birdie dragons. Birdie dragons hate change. I think that's a lie, man. That's baloney. If you uh, if you change their habitat at an early age and um, you decorate, put in new things like the hides, leaves, trees, things like that, um, they'll get used to it, you know what I'm saying, as a baby. As a baby and a juvenile, you know what I'm saying? Don't ever buy no sand. I'm going to talk about that. But yeah, if you changing uh if you changing their uh terrarium a lot, man, they'll get used to it. Check out these pretty dragons, man. Look at them, man. I might get one. What up, guys? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? But anyway, man. Your birdie dragon will like change if you change your stuff a lot at an early age. But for the most part, they don't like change. Also, birdie dragons do not need to go into brumation. Birdie dragons do not need to go into brumation. They don't have to. If you have the right temps, like I've seen with plenty of people, if you have the right temps, your dragon won't go into brumation, and that's a good thing. Also, uh, you keep your temps pretty high, like I said. Um, I keep mine around right now between 117, 113. On my hot side, on my cool side, it's about 86. Um, I have a four and a half foot by two and a half foot wide by two feet high. I built my custom terrarium. You guys go check that out on another one of my videos. Also, uh, yeah, if you keep the temperatures high, man, they will not go into brumation. And then another thing, man, uh, that's a myth. And it's kind of true about them being picky eaters. My dragons, E-Ray, the orange one, he will eat vegetables. This yellow guy, Kafir, he will not eat vegetables. I have to give them to him through a slurry like uh, Lizard Guru, Guru, Guru says. Shout out to Lizard Guru. Guru. But um, they are picky eaters. Another myth is they stink. British dragons do not stink. Their poop stinks. Um, a dirty keeper stinks. A dirty keeper is horrible. A dirty keeper is why, and a dirty owner is why British dragons stink. Their poop stinks. You clean it up, get it out, boom, it's gone in a few minutes. But if you are dirty and you're not cleaning the uh, terrarium, of course your birdie dragon's gonna stink. So that's a myth that's false. They do not stink. Also, the 40 ga gallon breeder um, that people say is a minimal. I don't, I don't agree with that. Even when they're a baby. I mean, a baby's fine with a 40 gallon breeder, but juveniles and adults need something bigger than a 40 gallon breeder. That's facts, all these heat lights. Now, we're going to go into the heat lights. The red heat light, I'm shaking, my arm tired. 
but the 40 uh the red heat light at night is not needed man in the wild they do not have a damn red heat light also um you can get a ceramic uh bulb you get a ceramic bulb a heat bulb at night that'll do good man it doesn't a ceramic bulb does not put off light so that's cool if your temperatures drop below I say 70, 65, somewhere in there, you know what I'm saying? If it drops below that, get you a ceramic heat bulb. Also, cannot cohabitate. That's a myth, it's false. These guys are doing well. They cuddle up, they uh, they intertwine their tails together, all that. Um, I think since I put them together as babies, uh, they're gonna do well. And also, if, it depends on the, the dragon's personality and temperament. If you have a mean bearded dragon, reptiles. If you have a mean bearded dragon, of course you can't cohabitate because he's an asshole. So get him out of there, get him in a tank by himself. But if you have laid back dragons like these guys and most people that put them together, they're fine. Don't bunch them all up in one tank though. Like I say three max if you have them in maybe a five footer, six footer uh, terrarium. But they can live together in peace and harmony and love. But uh, that's that with that. Um, the 40 gallon breeder when they're little, nah. Mealworms. Now I'm about to buy some, some horny worms and mealworms and uh so black soldier fly larvae maybe but um those are all great meals mealworms are not a staple but i do feed mealworms along with uh horn worms black soldier fly larvae uh mostly dubia roaches is what i feed but i do mix everything together i let them pick and choose what they want because they're spoiled. These are some spoiled babies. Yes, they are. So, what up, Kefir? What are you doing? What are you doing, boy? But yeah, I let them pick what they want to eat, man. I, I'm, I get to pick what I want to eat, so I let them pick what they want. You know what I'm saying? Also, man, the last thing is, one of the last things, these damn heat rocks. Heat rocks, heat rocks. Heat rocks and heat pads are trash. British dragons have a third eye, a sensor on top of their dome that they sense heat with. That is how they tell how hot they need their body and things like that. Their heat sensor is not from below them. You see white underneath the underside. It's very sensitive on, under their bellies, tails, and palms. Well, palms not so much, but their skin underneath is very sensitive. They do not need a heat pad or a heat rock. They cannot sense that. It will burn them up. So don't get that shit out your tank. And also, uh, hate change. Don't have to go into brumation. Heat pad, heat rock, no cohabitate. Cohabitation. Uh, 40 gallon minimum. Salmonella. That's another one. You cannot get salmonella from these guys unless you lick or eat their poop. Other than that, you can kiss them, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But you can't get salmonella unless you eat their poop. And I think that's about it, man. Uh, the mealworm thing. Man, that's baloney, dog. They can eat mealworms. But uh, I'm about to cut this out. I'm going to check out um, some chameleons and look at these little beardies because i like looking at beardies and then i'm gonna get out of here after i forget my stuff but here goes these guys i like that little yellowish one pretty dope 59 bucks oh don't buy your bearded dragon from a petco or pet smart because they buy from mill mill warehouses where they stuff them in like little little uh containers don't do it don't buy from them here goes a chameleon 
Uh, can you see him, guys? Can you see him? Can you see him? He's a pretty cool dude. I'm gonna get a chameleon next. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna get you one of you guys. Yes, I am. That's my goal, man, to get uh, iguana, one iguana, one tegu, um, two chameleons. Um, I think I'm gonna go with uh, not the veil, but the uh, is the jaguar panther, panther chameleon, and then um, might get something else, man. But I'm gonna build a shed in the backyard, and that's where they're gonna all live. It's gonna be pretty big and pretty dope. It's gonna be like a shed reptile room with a heater and all kind of crap in it, free roam bugs and all that. But uh, I'm about to check out what I need from here, and I'll hit you guys back, man. Always be good, treat your animals well, and love them. It's your boy Thunder Up 405. Thrash the like, pound that subscribe, and Pagona out.